So, a couple of weeks ago I did a shout out on my Instagram asking if anyone had any questions they wanted to put to me. I literally haven't thought about these questions at all, I'm just going to read them off my phone and go from there. So, Marshcat205 asks, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you choose and why? This is a really good question and a really hard one. It would definitely first off be somewhere hot. Definitely. To be a bit more specific, I love Spanish-speaking countries. Both me and Sam speak Spanish and I'd love for the boys to speak Spanish. So Spain would be epic or if we're being a little bit more adventurous and um, somewhere in Latin America, Argentina, Costa Rica, any of those places would be awesome. But somewhere hot and somewhere Spanish-speaking. NatK91 says, Do you ever get lonely during the day? Well, I'm in a bit of a unique situation, I suppose, in that my mum and dad live pretty much across the road from us. So when I do get those pangs of slight loneliness, which everyone gets, which are totally normal, especially when you're just with a baby all day that can't really interact massively, when I get those pangs, I pop over to my parents for a cup of tea, which is really, really nice, and I am hugely grateful for having them there. I think... That's also a massive reason, just to go off on a bit on a tangent, why I never really went to baby classes because when I had those moments of feeling like I wanted to talk to people or get out of the house, I'd just pop over there to my parents. So yeah, definitely get bored and um, that's my solution. Gems Beautiful Truth asks, how did you get into vlogging and where do you see yourself in the next five years? So the reason I got into vlogging is because I actually work for YouTube. Well, I work for Google and Google own YouTube. I started working with brands who wanted to work with YouTubers. It was kind of early on in the whole YouTuber thing, and I didn't see many mums on YouTube, so I just thought, actually, I've got something to say. I was pregnant with Jack, and so I started making a couple of videos. I used to just do them on my phone in one take, no editing, really crap lighting. Um, so I got into it that way, and then I just realized that I loved having the videos to keep more than anything, I love, love, love having those times captured on film that we can go and look over afterwards. Um, so that's how I got into it really, through my day job. Fancy Tits, such a great name, says, I'd love to know more about your lack of routine. Practically speaking, how do you make it work with your toddler? Does he get hungry or tired, meltdowns, or is he an easygoing chap? He looks it. Oh. Or does a movable feast of snacks and catch up naps do the trip? Basically, I'd love some tips on being more flexible. <laughs> As you can see now, this is probably quite a good live example. Sunny is quite tired and a bit kind of, oh, no tea, and a bit niggly um, and probably needs to sleep to be honest. And I know him and I know that he's really tired, but I want to film this video. So he's just kind of in on the action too, just being a little bit niggly. It's okay because I know that he'll sleep when I go and collect Jack from nursery and I know that he'll probably just go to bed a little bit earlier. Like I know that he'll cope. So. <laughs> so when it comes to not having a routine, which we don't, I suppose I just sort of go with the flow and I'm continually adapting along the way. I've actually written a blog post all about this subject matter that I'm going to link below. Exactly as um, Fancy Tits asked, it is just a movable thing whereby snacks and naps and meltdown and all of that just occurs and you just kind of get on with it. But for me, Having a routine, having things happen the same time every day, I just personally couldn't cope with. I know for some people that brings about a big sense of calm. I would find it monotonous and you know what? I kind of live for the whole not knowing what's going to happen. I kind of live for the spontaneity. You know, like I didn't plan on having Sunny in this video, but actually I kind of like that he's in it. Don't I? I mean, I wish he'd scratch me and poke me a bit less but you know they both definitely get hungry they definitely get tired they definitely have meltdowns but don't those things happen anyway when you don't have a routine <sighs> I think that not having a routine makes them flexible kids and adaptable and actually sometimes Jack astounds me with his maturity like so grown up and I think that the way that we do things just taking the kids along with us as we go going with the flow all of that stuff. I just think it's, oh, I'm really out of breath. I just think it's a good thing. But yes, of course things go wrong. I always say that having a non-routine based approach works 80% of the time. 
20% of the time it goes tits up and you've got to leave wherever you are because you've got chronically overtired kids or you have a complete meltdown because one of them is absolutely starving. I mean shit definitely hits the fan, probably more than it does for people who do have routines but personally I wouldn't have it any other way. And also there's always Peppa Pig and Paw Patrol and the digital nanny when things go wrong. So yeah, we just make it work. We just make it work. <laughs> Mum Stats asks, what's your day job? I'm always intrigued when I meet other mums to hear about work-life balance. How will you juggle when you go back? That is a very good question and very relevant because I'm thinking about that literally right now. So my day job is, as I think I mentioned earlier, I work for Google. Um, I've been there for a couple of years and I work four days a week um, when I'm not on maternity leave. And yeah, I absolutely love it. I work in the sales team with a great group of people and we work with brands who want to run advertising on YouTube. In terms of the work-life balance, wow, that is such a toughie. I have to admit, I kind of struggled with Jack when I went back to work and just getting that balance right. It's really, really hard being a working mum. I think just as I was going on maternity leave with Sunny, had we just about got down our routine with Jack in terms of getting him to nursery and getting ourselves to work. Like, it took nearly a year of trying different combinations of things to work out what worked best for me and Sam in terms of getting us dressed, getting us out of the house, getting Jack to nursery, getting both of us to work. Like, it is a really, really tricky thing to get right. If I were to give advice to other mums who are about to go back to work, it is keep trying different combinations of things. Zoe Phoenix or Phoenix asks, what are your top five mooch around the house with the kids albums? Needing an injection of something new over here. Great question. So I love, love, love John Martin. He's kind of like my soundtrack for my maternity leaves because he's just so beautiful, his songs. I love a band called Fat Freddy's Drop. If you're more into reggae or kind of funky soul, they're amazing. They're from New Zealand. If I want to listen to something acoustic-y, I love Nick Mulvey or Brett Denon or Ben Howard. If I want to listen to something intelligent, I put Radio 4 on or some podcasts, which I love. I'm going to just separate post all about this stuff, actually. If I want to listen to something wistful and girly, then I put on Laura Marling. She's my go-to for that. Elizabeth J. Donovan asks, what was your weaning journey like? What was your approach? So with Jack, I was very much baby-led weaning and used to just give him finger foods when he was in his high chair and just sort of let him go from there. With Sunny, I've actually done a lot more pureeing. So I think it's because I've had my Maggi Mix out anyway for making smoothies and stuff. So I've been whizzing up things a lot more for him and making them into mush which he seems to like, and he's such a good eater, so he gets through a lot of that. I started giving him food a lot earlier, so I gave him um, some potato and some vegetables at around four and a half, five months. He's now six months, and he's had egg, and he's had peanut butter, and he's had bread. He's basically had, he's had fish. He's had pretty much everything and anything, and that's just because I'm making it for Jack and for us. And for him, I just whack some in the Maggi mix, and he has the same. So our weaning journey has sort of kind of fast forwarded a little bit, it's just gone really really fast and he's sort of skipped to basically eating what Jack eats but just mushed up. Miss Jazz Diamond says, tell us more about Papalina and your hubby wife work life. Currently on mat leave with the possibility of having to be more dependent on my partner's income. So Sam Papalino works full time as a lawyer for a tech startup. I'm very proud of him, he works really hard for us. Um, that somehow manages to be a super, super hands-on dad as well. His hours vary hugely. Sometimes he's back at seven, sometimes he's back at nine. It changes every day, and I've sort of learned to be totally okay with that. I try and be as flexible as I can. If I'm having a real nightmare day, then I ask him to come home a bit early. But otherwise, he kind of walks through the door when he walks through the door, and if the kids are awake, great. If they're not, great. And we get to eat dinner in peace. Um, but yeah, that's how we do it really. However, when I go back to work, that will shake things up massively and we'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it because the balance changes again then. Summary and Bright asks, what's your thoughts on today's consumerism lifestyle and how do you fit into it? I am on a bit of a mission to basically not buy so much stuff. And I'm doing this hashtag thing on Instagram called say no to stuff. I'm on a mission to basically cut back on things that I own. 
It started when I realised I just didn't even know it was in my kitchen cupboard. I didn't know that I had like four tins of tinned tomatoes and I went out and I bought another four tins of tinned tomatoes and that was just because I had too much stuff that I didn't even know what I owned and basically that just bums me out the idea of not knowing what we own. So I am, yeah, on a mission to say no to stuff. I haven't bought anything that isn't totally necessary, i.e. that isn't toilet paper or food or nappies for three and a half, four months now. No clothes, no accessories, nothing. I bought one bag from a charity shop. I caved, it was a beautiful leather bag. But apart from that, I haven't bought anything. Nothing for the kids, no toys, no new clothes for me, nothing. Um, nothing for the house, nothing. And it feels so good. I'm already feeling a bit lighter, like I have less stuff, like I need less stuff. It's just making me realize that I do not need so much stuff. I don't need to buy another jumper. I don't need to buy another little toy for the kids. Um, you really need very little and I'm just realising that more and more. Mama to Charlie says, do you think Jack and Sunny will go to mainstream school or have you ever considered home edit? So, I love the idea of homeschooling. I love most of all the idea of just being led by what's going on around you in your surroundings. So, if we have to go to the supermarket one day, I love the idea of making a lesson out of the fruit and veg that you see around you. The kids learning maths from looking at the amount that we spent and going home and analysing the receipt. If we take a drive out to the countryside and see some beautiful birds flying in the sky that we make it our mission to look up birds when we get home. Of course, if you do do homeschooling, there is a curriculum that you follow. And I think that's where I'd struggle because you have to be extremely regimented. It's a lot of work to homeschool your children beyond just what I just described. Like there is actually set things you have to do. So I think for that reason, I would just find it selfishly a lot of work, too much work. I think it would require serious dedication on the side of the parents, which I don't think I have that right now. I don't think I'm in the right headspace to do that. I think the only circumstances in which we'd homeschool is if we took a year out and went traveling. And then I would make it my mission to educate the kids and make sure that they learn things in line with the curriculum. I equally also love the idea of them going to school and being with other children and making friends and socializing. I think those things are really, really important as well. Balanced Beauty Bristol says, where do you buy or look for your clothes? I'm not much of a shopper. Regardless of whether I'm doing this whole thing where I'm not buying stuff, even before that, I really, really am not much of a shopper. I love top shops, I love charity shops. Acne is absolutely beautiful, but way too expensive. I like whistles, but also very expensive, so I go there for sale. I'm not much of a shopper, I'm sorry. I'm really not very good on this question. The Millie Jones says, how do you entertain the small people on long haul flights? Well, it's a combination of snacks, books, toys, train sets, and of course, the digital nanny, AKA an iPhone or an iPad or something like that. Also, we do a lot of walking up and down the aisles and making friends with people and talking to people and letting people hold the babies and meeting other babies. We also try and make friends with the air stewards because they are really important and powerful people. They can do anything like give you a pouch of Ella's food when you really need it, bring you milk for the baby, to getting you an extra seat when you really, really need one. So yeah, that's a tip. Make friends with the air hostess because they can do a lot for you. Right, Sunny's gone in the bouncer. I also got some other questions, by the way, about yoga, which I'm going to answer separately. What? Got my tea back. Miss Meow asks, I'm curious about your job at Google, also did you go to university, if so, even if not, do you like studying, does it come easy? Did you have a clear idea of what you wanted to do job wise when you were younger? So in reverse order, did you have a clear idea about what you wanted to do job wise? No idea, I wanted to be a journalist because I've always loved writing, which is quite interesting now that I'm a blogger because obviously I'm writing a lot and I love it. I'm curious about your job at Google, so I think I explained that earlier. Did you go to university? I did. I went to Oxford and I studied French and Spanish. Do you like studying? Does it come easy to you? I love and hate studying, so I love um, sitting down and getting into a subject and learning loads about it and um, the rigour that comes with it. However, I hate exams. After my last exam, in my finals at Oxford, I vowed that I would never do another exam in my life. The pressure, the stress, it's just, it's not for me. And she asks, oh, what's your favorite chocolate? So I love dark chocolate. 
a really high cocoa content, so like 75-80% dark chocolate, green and blacks do an amazing one. I think that's it. I hope that I've answered all of your questions. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Sorry it's been a bit chaotic with Sunny. He's still wide awake, I'm just bouncing him now with one foot. I really, really enjoyed doing that. Thank you so much to everyone that asked a question. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Peace out.